All right. Well, we got people here. People are going to continue to come on in and we record this. So should somebody miss it, we can always send them the recording. But welcome to the June edition of the San Diego user group. Wait, I gotta put on the party sunglasses. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> Once Bevy allows me to have a virtual background, it's gonna be off the hook. I'm It'll telling you. <laughs> uh, this week's theme, or this month's theme rather, is y'all ready for this? Summer 21 release notes. And uh, in case I go too like deep with my puns, it was a Jaws reference because it's summer and we're in San Diego and Jaw. You and I ruined anyway. it by not having a shark onesie. And Christy and... ruined it by not having a shark onesie. And that is why, if you follow me on Twitter, you will see I'm interviewing for new best friends. Here's hoping it's Ryan Reynolds. Or though the cow from Chick-fil-A would probably always hook me up with Chick-fil-A sandwiches. So that's something to consider, too. Truth. All right. Anyway, um, this month we are doing uh, a drawing. So we are going to have multiple winners this month. We have swag to give out. Uh, one of them being this awesome pride shirt. Not worry. Don't worry, this one. We'll get you a new one. And in some your size. Too. And the glasses. Again, in your size. You're not going to wear my old stuff. <laughs> but <laughs> we're going to have one uh, winner from the uh, chat channel that we're going to pick at random. So if you are chatting in chat, you can best believe I'm writing it down to put in my little cup of randomness to draw from later. If you are on Twitter and you use the following hashtag, Jaw Ready for Summer. Um, we will pick a winner from Twitter as well. <laughs> so got a couple chances to win some cool swag this month. Hope you take part. Hope you guys talk to each other in the chat because that is what this is all about. You know, just creating that uh, San Diego community. And when we're done talking at you, we'll, we'll enable everyone we'll to enable talk. video. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to talk at you for a bit and then we're going to all come together. <laughs> so eat your lunches now because so you can be ready to talk later if right. you want to. Um, so uh, thank you very much, Christopher. Uh, getting started on the Summer 21 release, um, Christy and I thought we'd talk a little bit about how our team prepares for releases. Um, depending on the size of your org, a release can come and go, and you may not even notice a difference. If you have more complicated orgs, you feel the pain and the pressure to make sure that nothing is broken when that five minutes past four o'clock on that Friday afternoon roll by. Um, we are one of those orgs. Um, I think, Christy, you can agree if we had um, I think the things that add to our complication is that we have CPQ and we have Einstein analytics, both things which seem like different beasts when it comes to uh, the release actually entering production. Totally. Yeah. So what we've done uh, is we have a shared Confluence document. Our um, uses Confluence to share things, but we wanted to share that with you today in case you guys are on an org that's more complicated um, and you're trying to figure out how to prepare for each of these releases. So what we have is our Summer 21 release document. Um, we know when our sandbox preview was. We set the dates for when our org is going to um, be on the Summer 21 release. And then we go through and comb through the documentation to find all of the relevant features to our org. Are you going to share now, your screen? Oh, so sorry. <laughs> Got to do that. Thanks, Christy. Thank you very much. I was so used to sharing my screen for the music, I forgot. <laughs> Thank you. Share. Here we go. There it is. <laughs> there it is. There it is. So we have our, this is how we try and strategize being as prepared as we can. We know when the sandbox preview is going to go live. We know when the summer release is going to go live in our orgs. And we try and stay on top of that. Then we go through the release notes. And a lot of what this is, is going through other blogs to see what people have found interesting, but also just going into the release documentation and using that search feature to look for the clouds that we use, look for the products that we use, and find all of those relevant features and make sure that we're up to date on it. And so what you'll see is we have our area, the feature, the release notes, who's going to own it, the testing tickets, some fun descriptive emojis because we like a little bit of fun, and then our overall thoughts on the release and what is needed in order for it to go smoothly into our org. And so this is our documentation that we, I would say, spent the better part of a month going through and testing, Christy. Mm -hmm. And so this, is, this was our best way to keep on top of it. 
And it was a really great way to do so because as a result of these tickets, we were able to create um, our change sets prepped and ready in our sandboxes so that when Friday, June 11th came, we were ready to deploy what needed to be changed in order for our org to not experience any hiccups. It also gives me another place to embed Bitmojis, which are my favorite thing in the whole world. Yes, I would like to say in the future, if you allow us to use Bitmojis, you should have said descriptive Bitmoji instead of emoji, because here we are all doing emojis and then you come in with, what? <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> Woman. My rose but. is cooler. <laughs> That is just one way, um, an idea for all of you to um, get a handle on your Summer 21 release or any release in general. Um, if any of you have the same problems that we have as an org, please let us know. It'd be nice to feel that we're not alone on this island of feeling like every release something is on fire and we're spending our Saturdays, you know, chugging mimosas and trying to fix our org. I mean, we fix our org first, then the chug the mimosas, but you get it. <laughs> When we when we open up for conversation later later, it would be good to to hear about what you guys are doing too. This is the first time we've actually tried organizing it like this, and I think it was actually pretty successful. Like I feel like we I actually was, got through all the testing we needed to do, which was great. We did. I actually felt like reasonably okay uh, when Friday came around. Yeah, it wasn't like oh no, it's happening. <laughs> Dear God, <laughs> everybody belt in. But so yes, yeah, so this these are our release notes. Now going into the Summer 21 release features, I once again have made a slightly OCD spreadsheet for you guys that I will share, um, where I again uh, watched the release readiness and timestamps the important things. Um, I will say with the summer release webinars for summer, um, I they were a little lacking in details for me. Um, so I actually got more information from the blogs that I read and reading the release documentation itself. So you will see here, we actually have a couple things that we're going to talk about today that were just not covered really well or even at all in the release webinars. Um, but I think that, you know, there's still really cool features that you guys need to be aware of. Something that I noticed is that so many of the features that came out this release are just in beta. And so you can't actually use them in production, yeah. but they're just like teasing us. Like I can play with them in a sandbox, but I can't actually use it. Yeah, I I almost wish that there was a separate web webinar for like, hey, let's discuss the beta features because I feel like they just slip beta in yeah. when they're they're talking about it. And then when I try and deploy something, I'm like, oh, of course. <laughs> <laughs> but that's okay. Um, so I am going to, um, you'll see this is where you can find the playlist of all of the Summer 21 web webinars. And these are the titles of the ones that um, I thought had the most information on them. Um, I did watch them all. Um, I think like the Automate one, the, the Einstein Automate, which goes over flow and process builders and all those improvements. It was kind of a repeat of what was already talked about in the admin preview. So if you're trying to get caught up on the Summer 21 release webinars, you can do a two for by watching just the admin preview and you will have essentially seen everything that is in the flow one. Um, same with, um, the service cloud one, it was a lot of repeat, or sorry, the platform one was a lot of repeat was of what was already in the sales cloud. So again, don't don't kill yourself watch an hour after hour when you can just watch one and you know that you've, you've hit all the hot topics. All right, so I'm gonna go into some of my favorite features. Um, I am a proud member of the Flow HANA, love it to death ever since I was forced to learn it a couple of years ago and now I, I can't live without it. So one of my favorite features that has come in the summer 21 release is multi-column flow screens on your screens. It's such a big deal. <laughs> So I'm going to go into one of our flows um, in our dev org and you'll see I, I already improved the the columns on this one by making it a two column. And I'm going to go to one of the other screens to see if I can do the same thing here. So in the past, we just had to deal with the fact that if we're making a screen flow, we are either have to chop it up into multiple screens, or we're going to have a screen that potentially has an excess number of fields. And as we all know, getting users to fill out fields when it just looks like an overwhelming amount is challenging. So having this multi-column um, ability 
we're now able to essentially trick them into filling out more because it's still within that nice consolidated and clean space. So if, to do that, it's really simple. In the display section, you will see the section and you just drag it in. And then you can drag your fields into it from here or, or create them from there. Um, I'm just gonna go like this, put you all in there for a hot second. And then you'll see on the right hand side, the ability to configure the columns. You can add up to four columns. So I can go like that. And then you adjust the width uh, based on, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, Christy? What you want. <laughs> 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 the width is a percentage of the total, we'll say that. So you can make columns wider and smaller, like if you had a bunch of checkboxes that you wanted to consolidate into to one column, you know, you can make that more narrow to give your space, yourself space in other sections. If I wanted to get rid of these, I could. Yes, I'm going to delete you too. And then I'm going to put you over here and you like that. And that looks a whole lot better. Um, call script, actually, I'm going to... Why not? I'm going to make it fancy and I'm going to put my call script over there. So I'm going to make this a three column one. So I go fancy. ahead and <laughs> thank you so much. I hit done. I hit save, save as in this example. And then Mark just maybe. put in the chat um, that you could use essentially a screen flow to replace like your typical two column record layout and give it more columns, which is like, yes, a hundred percent. That's a great idea. So if I go to the service console real quick, I think I put it there. Oh no, I went to regular service instead of console. My apologies. You'll see I have my screen flow just started right here and I already have the, the two columns ability. And so I can just put in my name, hit next. This one we didn't touch, so I'm just gonna put in, I think that's a full number. And then, well, I can plainly see that that doesn't work. I should probably decrease that font size, but still multi columns and screen flows are a game changer and something that we should definitely uh, pay attention to um, and again it's taking up less space your end users are feeling like oh this is this is barely anything to handle because again it's not taking up half their page that they have to fill out so that is one of my favorites it's um, so pretty it's so pretty um oh, wait, while we with... have a question about that yes mark says how did you do the call out feature on your flow screen the call out feature oh the the call script is that what he's referring to maybe no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, truth be told mark this is uh one of the uh basic um this is one of the template flows that salesforce provides when you spin up a dev org and so i was just like oh, that looks pretty i'll keep it um you'll see it's it's this guy right here delete that. But I yes. think that the call scripts are actually referencing another flow because call scripts are actually built in their own screen flow and then I, it embeds those screens inside of what other whatever else you're doing. I think it's I think works. you're right. Which is super cool. Which is cool too. Um, and maybe we can cover that in another another webinar. Um, while listening to or while watching these webinars, one thing that was made abundantly clear and has been made to us for a while is Salesforce's um, ease with comparing how awesome Flow is compared to Workflow Rules and Process Builder. In fact, in this release, they actually called out Workflow Rules specifically, which beforehand they had only been saying, hey, you know, move all of your process builders over to Flow. It's going to be a lot easier. But now they're calling out Workflow Rules as well. Um, so it's just something interesting. They obviously want us to learn and embrace flow because that is where the majority of these improvements are happening. Um, one of the things that they said is flow is up to 10 times faster when updating fields versus process builder and workflow rules. And that's just crazy. A huge amount of time. <laughs> so it's just something to be aware of. If you don't have that comfort level with flow like you do with workflow rule and process builder, feel free to let us know in the chat. Christy and I have been discussing, you know, future um, 
events that we want to have and future speakers that we want to get to this group. And if you guys would benefit from some flow expert teaching us how to get started in flow, let us know. Because if it, it's still making you nervous, the idea of even starting to learn flow, because Trailhead just feels like it's it's not telling you the whole picture, let us know and, and we can get that going. Um, Again, I'm I'm on flow for a while. Um, debugging flows, we can now debug record triggered flows, which if you had to debug flow in the past, it was on a record trigger flow. It was a lot of, hey, I'm just gonna create this full record and see what happens. Um, or do no what Tracy does where she puts like a chatter node after each step. So it sends her a message. <laughs> and I can see how far it got in the flow. Yep, I do that too. <laughs> so this is a big deal for those of you who do other methods of debugging. Um, <laughs> Summer. 21 is now saving us from that. Another thing with regards to debugging that uh, Flow is saving us from is failed Flow interviews are being saved. And this is a huge deal because usually when a Flow fails, you get that email that says, you know, you've done something disastrously wrong, you suck at life and you need to, you know, reassess your life, right? That email always gets lost. Or you read that email and you have so many nodes in that flow or even that process builder and you, you spend how many minutes searching for where you think the error might be. So now we have these this awesome um, ability to look at those failed flow interviews right within Salesforce. And so if you just search flow, um, I had been searching fail but that felt pretty negative. So if you just search flow, you will come to paused and failed flow interviews. They offer you two different list views, all of your paused flow interviews versus all of your failed flow interviews. And then you can see right here what it was, where it stopped, what the problem was. And if you click in the interview itself, it actually opens up the canvas. And so you can see, okay, what happened here? Oh. All right, invalid or restricted pick list. All right, that is why it failed in this case. And so it makes debugging so much easier than it had been in the past. Um, so pay attention to this because, you know, those emails just send you on a wild goose chase a lot of times. Um, and this is a much easier way to uh, debug what you're building. Let's see, up next, uh, again in Flow, I'm not gonna give a demo of it, but um, being able to collection sort or sort your collections in Flow is such a big deal. Um, for those of you who feel like you are making loops and loops and loops and your loops get timed out, um, collection sort can save you from this. So um, play with that a little bit in Flow. It's really easy to do. They make it simple. Um, yeah, that's a game changer as well. The next thing that I want to show you guys outside of Flow, I'll finally stop talking about Flow, but what? that's crazy. I know, I know. <laughs> Still big deals is um, manual sharing. So back in spring 21, the uh, Salesforce finally blessed us with, okay, if you're in Lightning, you can now manually share. But they didn't show us, you know, how it's, we see it in Classic is like, why is this being shared with this person? Who is it being shared with? We still had to switch back to Classic for that. No more in Summer 21. Now you can see the sharing hierarchy as well. So you don't have to switch back to Classic to see this stuff. So I can easily see who my records are being manually shared with, their access, and the reason why. Um, Little feature, but again, it feels like a big deal because Salesforce is constantly trying to get us into lightning and they're saying that we're at full parity, but we always have to keep pointing out, but what about this? <laughs> but what about this? Please. <laughs> um, the last thing that I want to demo, I actually am not going to fully demo. Uh, and I'll explain why in a bit. <laughs> it's a bad but, day. <laughs> it's mass actions in split views. And for those of you who are um, training end users one on end users one on one, either you're dealing with service people, salespeople, or marketing people, we're all trying to teach them the benefits of list views. At least that's how it's been for me in every org. Um, reporting can sometimes be complicated for the end user. They don't really have a grasp on the, the relationships between the objects and they get just like bogged down by the field choices that they have in a report completely understandable. And so from my point of view, I've always tried to gear people towards making a list view first because it's a simple concept and it's live data right there. And it has things like inline editing and all of this awesome stuff. Um, and everything's hyperlinked, you know, so you can just quickly go to your record or quickly hover over your record. Um, teaching people about list views, you'd of course teach them about table, Kanban, you know, that's the, the white whale you hope everybody understands, but nobody seems to do it. And then split view. Split view, in theory, seems like the one that made the most sense 
because people are able to look at their records work on their records while still, you know, looking at all of their open cases or looking at all of the leads that they still have to call. You know, they had an action bar on the side while still working within the record itself. But we had a problem with um, split views. You couldn't perform any mass action on a split view. You would have to go back to the table and then select your records, if it lets me. <laughs> There we go, if it lets me, and then like change the status or update the case. And so while it's not that inconvenient, it's still three additional clicks. Well, Salesforce has blessed us with, that's fine, that's great, we hear you, we're putting mass actions in split view. Awesome, so all of those mass actions that you have on the object, you now can use on your split view with the caveat of you can't do it on our recently viewed list. However, I had tested this, this was one of my tickets. I tested this in our sandbox, everything worked perfectly. And then I spun up our dev org for this meeting and I have not been able to get it to work. <laughs> Can't explain why, I, I, it's added a mystery to me. I even went in and logged into our production org and sure enough, mass actions on their split views there are not available either. So I'm not sure if this is a bug that's you know where we're gonna see a patch soon or in the more likely scenario, it's Tracy's user error. Um, but if you are able to get this to work in your org, please let us know how you did it. Because uh, while I was able to do it a couple weeks ago in test, I can no longer reproduce this ability. So I just wanted to let you guys know, um, it's possible that it's a patch, much more likely that it's just me. <laughs> there were a couple things in this developer org that we spun up that I also could not enable. Yeah, because like you have I, to contact um, support or do this or that, and it just wasn't available. I went into other dev orgs to try and recreate it. I went into other orgs that I'm a part of, could not recreate oh, it there either. I did it in a trailhead playground, couldn't do it, get it done. <laughs> so <laughs> you tried really hard though. I tried really hard. <laughs> Um, so that is the demos that I wanted to show you. Other things that are in here um, that Salesforce wanted to boast about, but I think are um, you have access to the Your Account app. Um, this is kind of a big deal if you uh, have other admins that potentially have access. Um, they advertised it as, hey, now you can buy more licenses with ease. That feels like a decision that not all the people should be able to make. <laughs> so <laughs> you should check in on that and make sure that, you know, only lock it down. So it, only yeah. people who... <laughs> can purchase licenses on behalf of your company are uh, uh, allowed to. Um, in the app guidance. looks really cool though. I think they built it on top of B2B commerce, which was really beautiful. Yeah, it does look nice and clean, but it also looks, you know. Scary. Hey, do you want to buy Pardot today? <laughs> yeah, let's do it. Yeah. <laughs> Um, In-app guidance is another thing that we've seen in every release, seen improvements from. Um, not going to go into it today, but now generally available is you get three free free walkthroughs. And so that's a, con that's a nice little number to play with. Um, so if your org doesn't want to purchase it, you still get three free walkthroughs walk that you can use and uh, play with. I wanted to um, start testing that to see if it's three free walkthroughs at a time so like if i deactivate one can i or add in total. on another one yeah or in total oh, but i think one. it's awesome that they're giving those out because yeah. i feel like it should just be part of an app guidance it's anyways, like if but... we hold out long enough it'll just become a standard feature that we don't yeah. have to pay extra for, for yeah. sure. <laughs> there we go <laughs> Um, expirations on permission sets and permission set groups. That's a great tool to use if you have interns in your org or you have temporary users or there's a temporary need to grant a user extended access. Put an expiration date on that so you don't have to remember like, oh shoot, I gave them access to credit card information, you know? And then the last is, it seems small, but it's actually a big deal for those of us who have PowerPoint presentations and we're showing off Salesforce to those users in our org who don't have Salesforce access, the ability to download images of Salesforce dashboards. So you can download the image, you can put it in your PowerPoint presentation, it's looking awesome. No need to try and use like Snagit or the snipping tool to like cut out the piece that you need so that you can put it in your PowerPoint. Salesforce is offering that there for us. That'd be so nice. I feel like during the release readiness live, like Twitter blew up when they when they did that They one. did. <laughs> Everybody was very excited. <laughs> Yay, finally. Oh. <laughs> Christy, do you want me to keep sharing my screen or do you want to go into your demo? Um, I'll share my screen. All right, I'll stop sharing. 
I'm going to um, show you the inline report editing, which I think is really cool with some with some hesitance. <laughs> with some hesitance. <laughs> so, like like Tracy said, I, we always encourage our users to to build list views first. But of course, reports have obviously more powerful features. You can join other data to them. You can export them, which you can't do um, in a list view. And now they've also added this inline editing to reports, which you already have in a list view. Um, it's very limited. It's still in beta, of course, like all my other favorite features <laughs> from the summer <laughs> release. Um, but I can kind of see where they're headed with it. I think that, and I did ask during Release Readiness Live if they were trying to achieve parity between reports and list views. And I, I think that that's the way they're headed, which is pretty cool. Which would um, be awesome, yeah. So you'll notice like if I just hover over these things, there are some things that are locked, some things that I can edit. So I think the only fields right now that are available to edit are um, text number. And there was one other thing that I don't remember off the top of my head. But I think that the, the biggest thing uh, limitation at this point is that you can only save one thing at a time. So if you were going to use this to edit a lot of data, like you would in a list view, you could do like, each row down a column and save the thing once as a batch. You can't do that here. So I'll show you just like after every save, it's it's saving that record and then it's going to reload the report and then you do the next one, which I mean, it's still cool and it's in beta and they're working on it. Um, but I don't think that we're going to roll this out in our org for now, just because of all the limitations. Um, but something to think about, and it'll be a really awesome in the future, of course. Um, we got a question from Bryce here. Is okay. inline editing only available with tabular reports? I think so at this point, okay. yeah, for now. I, I can only assume that in the next release in spring, this will be like 50 times better, so. Yeah, it's it's funny what they do. They like tease us with something that could be spectacular, but when they present it to us, you're like, wah wah. Yeah. Are you, are you sure you want to show us this? I will say that the product managers who are working on this are very open to input right now about it. So um, I think if if you are playing with it and have any thoughts, maybe put them in the release readiness um, success community in in Salesforce chatter, um, and they'll totally talk to you about it, which is cool. I love all the Salesforce product managers. Um, so that's inline editing. Another cool uh, reporting feature that we got is we can now report on email messages, which we could not before. Um, so if we go into a setup really slowly. <laughs> really slowly. It's because it knows you're demoing. I also noticed I'm in the wrong org. That's OK. Um, so we'll see now that there is email message available in this list. Haha, <laughs> email messages. And so you're allowed to attach to associate email messages with leads, uh, contacts, and campaigns, I believe. It's limited to those three things. But now you can create a report that says, you know, this is actually how many times I spammed all of these leads and who opened it and get all those click rates and stuff without uh, having to use an external application to do those types of things. So just making it easier. I like really like this one because email messages are like a different record type, you know? And so being able to report on them was like next to impossible and out of the box Salesforce. And now that we can report on email messages is something separate like it just it's a game changer because before we had reps who wanted to get credit for the emails that they were sending but we couldn't report on it and so they would copy and paste the body of that email messages into a task and then task. save it <laughs> just so it could be reported on and this is like this was you know this is not a unique workaround that people were utilizing so being able to report on hey how many emails are you actually sending on your your leads list you know, or your contacts list and, and being able to show that very simply. Oh, I love and it. And be able to show if it bounced, when did they first open it? You know, you now have access to all of these different things. Um, was it incoming or outgoing? You know, all, all this informational marketing stuff that everybody needs to see um, to measure if their people are being 
productive or not, or if, you know, customers are being responsive. So I think that that's a good ad and I can only see that also getting better, being able to link that to, to more records and whatnot. Um, what else do I want to talk about? Oh, so something we did recently, um, We've had Service Cloud forever in our org, but we finally started using omni-channel routing, which is which is amazing. Um, but I'll show you, like to to get omni-channel routing your cases, it's all of these different settings that you have to configure. So something new that they've done is created a new flow template. So we'll talk about flow some more because flow is the best. Hashtag flow HANA. Um, where you can actually use flow to route all of your omni-channel, which gives you so much power. Like I can just feel it growing inside me. Um, so with normal omni-channel routing, you can do queue-based routing or you can do skill-based routing. And skill-based routing um, gives you a lot of room to do what you need to do. But now with, uh, with the flow omni-channel template, you can actually look at other values on that record. So maybe someone sent this person an email two days ago and I want to route it to that person or I can I would have the ability to to route direct to an agent in this case instead of having to depend on skills or availability. So um, I'm really excited about this. I haven't this is as far as I've gotten with it yet. Um, but it's a, a natural next step for us to do that. And I think that it'll be probably one of the most used service cloud features for sure in summer. Circle back for one second, Christy. We got a question about uh, yeah. the email reports again. Yep. Can you repeat the list of usable objects for the email reports? Oh yeah, uh, just leads, contacts, and campaigns. Right now, at this point in time. <laughs> Which I, I mean, really, I think you would only really need to report on leads and contacts, anyways, because. Those are your people, but I don't know. You got people who are know. relating it to the specific opportunity instead, and they want to see how many emails needed to be sent in order to close that opportunity. For sure, for sure. There it is. <laughs> oh, that's awesome, Brad. Yeah, you should totally show them, except for this omnichannel flow is still in beta. So I don't even know if you can put it in production yet. Um, so definitely show it to people, but um, I don't think we can actually start using it yet, which is sad, but that gives you a whole release cycle to uh, build it out and then move it to production when we're allowed to. So um, I love Omnichannel. It's amazing. Um, what else was I going to show? Oh, I know what I was going to show. Got rich text and yes. My most favorite thing out of the whole release, and you guys know that I'm in love with Einstein Analytics or Tableau CRM, it's now called. Um, they finally gave us rich text formatting. So now I can, I can make this. this Good picture. golly. <laughs> that is what you were building this morning. <laughs> which, makes, which makes me really sad. Yeah, this is what I was making <laughs> this morning. Um, but before you could only have like, it, it was set to, you know, size and color and that's all you could impact. So now we have justification and bold and italics and, you know, stuff that is in every other platform that should have been there all along. But um but yeah, now it's there. So I've uh, I've been updating all of my dashboards already. Can you embe embed GIFs? Oh, you can. With my dan my dancing shark buddy here. <laughs> <laughs> can you make your text blink? Um, not out of the box, but with a really elaborate SDK workaround. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So I saw someone else do this and it, it wasn't for blinking, obviously. It was like showing the movement of data over time, but you build out different pages um, or you like change your filters every second or something and it reloads your dashboard. And so it makes it look like it's changing even though it's not, it was pretty, it's pretty cool. <laughs> you wasted pages on that? <laughs> yeah. Fantastic. Uh, we I think it's awesome. How about embedding videos? Can you embed videos? Um, you can embed videos, I think, in the learning component. Um, no, I don't know where it is now. Hold on. I'm not sure where it is in the new thing, actually. But what you could do yes, is we there is a way. 
but I don't know where it went. <laughs> you could do a screen share later, record it, and then post it in the Trailblazer community. Oh, yeah, boom. I'll do yep. that. Done. I'll make a note of it for you. Unless you're just screwing with me, if you really want to know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think Bryce is screwing with you. He gave you a thumbs up. <laughs> okay, all right. Mark, on the other hand. <laughs> I'll do it anyways, Bryce. <laughs> He's a, Mark, is that part of the things that make it, that an admin should do to make their users blink? Or drink, yeah. <laughs> or drink, or drink, yes. Um, did you want to show the pipeline inspection? I think that was something that was yeah, not talked so about, but super cool. I really, really want to show it, and um, I'm just going to show ours. So I couldn't enable it in, the, in this developer org that we spun up. It is... And I was looking, it's only available in performance and unlimited editions at the moment, which I oh, thought was, was kind of odd. Um, but let me go somewhere. Um, <laughs> this is actually also really cool. And, and it's kind of tied in uh, with the Tableau CRM stuff. So, what it does is it on opportunity list views, it adds an additional button over here that says pipeline inspection. Um, and it's tied into your opportunity history. Let me um, put it on someone who actually has some data. I don't own anything. Um, so you have some filters here. So you can look at all of your opportunities closing in whatever time period you select, and then for whatever team or person you select. And you also still have your normal list view filters, so you can apply more filters. So if you wanted to look at certain record types or something, and all of this is out of the box, you can actually change it, um, but it rolls up all these different things for you. So it uses your forecast categories um, to do your best case, your commit and your open. And then it also shows you close last. And then I think the, the coolest things is it shows you the moved in and the moved out. So, and they have tool tips on these two. So moved in is if the close date of your opportunity was, you know, in a period after the one that you're filtered on, um, but is now in this one, then it'll show it there and then moved out. It was in this period and now it's in a future period. And when you click on those, you know, it changes the, the details for what those are. And this is a functionality that has always been in Tableau CRM, but takes a little bit of effort to get to. And this just makes it real time, um, which is really great. So anything that like has a color, you can hover on and it'll give you more information about what actually happened. And then on your recent activities column to you, you can hover on that and it actually gives you what the latest activities were, nice. which I think is, huge like this is a really great out of the box for performance and unlimited work. and you didn't have to build anything for this <laughs> no i just it's a it is a license permission set um so you just have to assign a permission but i think it's a pretty incredible like super quick way to get sales managers up and running managing their pipeline so so it's available only for professional and performance unlimited? performance oh, and unlimited performance and unlimited okay yeah and then do you need do you need to have tableau crm in order to see this or is this just standard no it's just standard the only thing you do have to have enabled is opportunity history tracking and that's just so that it oh, can okay. pull in the moved in and moved out all that I fun stuff i think that the release notes said that if you didn't have that enabled it just wouldn't show you those two but i feel like um that's the coolest part about it is to see people you know Explain why 200,000 was moved out. Right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> um, yeah, so that that is definitely one of my favorite things. And I actually just enabled it for our org. Um, and I'm getting ready to do a training on it. So I think it's pretty cool. And I can only see tools like that getting better too. And I also liked it, even though it's only available in performance and unlimited editions, I liked it that it was not an add-on product. Like I did not have to pay extra for it or buy another license or um, it was just there. So <laughs> Eric says, invite me to your <laughs> internal training. You could come, we Eric. <laughs> could slip you in. <laughs> uh, did you answer uh, what soccer game is the guy behind you watching? Oh. Maxim, what soccer game have you been watching? Uh, Ukraine. Ukraine. Do they play Ukrainian? themselves or are they playing somebody else? Who did they play? <laughs> who did they play? What? Who did the soccer team <laughs> play against? 
I guess it doesn't matter because Ukraine is probably Something. winning. <laughs> yes. Good, good job, Christy. Oh, Chris I'll... says it was the Netherlands. <laughs> All right. Should I turn everyone on? I think we can turn everyone on. We have some questions for you guys and some uh, other things that we wanted to share. Um, the first being um, in prepping for these awesome uh user group meetings, we are starting to talk about the idea of meeting in person. And we want to know how you guys feel about that idea. Would you be for it, against it? Would you prefer it's outside, inside? What's everybody's comfort level? Would you prefer some kind of hybrid where we do virtual slash in person? Um, we're, we're just trying to feel out because California did open two days ago. Apparently the coronavirus is gone now, so we can meet in person, but uh, we want to know how everybody's feeling about it. Now everyone speak. <laughs> I think the real question is where is it going to be because I'm I don't know how much I want to get into traffic because everything's it, opened again. Yes, we are we are very aware of that. We are thinking that what we would do would be maybe a happy hour on an evening and we're trying to find a, a nice medium place between the heart of San Diego and northern North County. So we're thinking maybe Solano Beach, Cardiff in that area. But again, um, just trying to, to put feelers out of, of what everybody wants and what they feel comfortable with. Yeah, what Tracy said. <laughs> <laughs> we've, we've been looking at places all over, but I don't, it, and we'll put a poll, I think, in the in the chatter community too. I don't want to put you guys on the spot, but obviously we don't know where what sides of town everyone is on, or your comfort level of you know should it be at a park instead of a brewery or something like right. that. So, um, just something to start thinking about, and then just let us know your feelings. <laughs> Let's do it. All right, we got a recommendation for Portside Pier. I like it. Right on. Um, another question that we wanted to ask is what clouds products are you guys using? Um, is there something that you are trying to desperately connect with other people on, but you feel like your your org is the only one using it? Like, do we have like, you know, marketing cloud users here that just have nobody to network with? Or is there something else so that we can bring those those speakers in and, and uh, get people talking? I see NPSP good one that is a good one is everybody here mostly sales cloud service cloud sales cloud cool sales cloud see heads nodding <laughs> sales and service how about any pardot users do we have pardot only you oh we got one <laughs> All right, this is again, we'll post in the community to ask you guys what you're des in desperate need of, of some networking or some extra knowledge on. We just wanna bring speakers in that will help all of us um, learn more and uh, you know gain insight. And then I had one other thing that I wanted to share with you guys, this documentation. Um, um, if you have not bookmarked it already, please do. It's the architect's guide to automation, essentially. It's uh, Salesforce's very, you know, continued subtle way of pushing us into flow. And so this is like their advice, their how-tos, their recommendations on, hey, here, are you considering building this? Why don't we navigate this way? Or here's why flow is better. Um, it's really great documentation that they're constantly updating. So please bookmark it just so you can be on the, the, cutting edge of when they're making big changes, you know what to do to your org in order to accommodate. That, oh, I'm just writing down all these ones that I'm seeing. I'm turning on um, the link sharing for the summer release document we were showing to you because everyone was. Oh, thank you, Christy. That. And I am putting that in the chat. Can you also post a link to our Trailblazer group so that we can get people joining that? Yep. Nice. Don't forget to, um, so I know it's kind of disconnected, but there's this one in the Trailblazer community groups, but then there's also our chatter group in the success community where you can actually talk and collaborate. Um, 
which will all be changing soon enough, but right now they're still separate. So make sure you join in both places. Yeah. How about your guys' favorite summer features? I know some of you put some in the chat, but anybody have anything to yell about? I don't know. <laughs> I like restriction rules, but I know they're still in beta and uh, still lack some of the main standard objects, but I think it'll be pretty cool building. Yeah, I like that. That's just like a, another level of, of permissions that you can set. Yep. Get super granular. Exactly. Customize it. Some nice filters. Yeah. We got finding failed flows faster is is their favorite. Um, manual sharing. Manual tracking. sharing. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> All great stuff. All right, Christy, I do have the, the collection of... Oh, of names. All right. So this is those who were talking in the chat. Okay. So I'll draw... Am I drawing one winner, Christy? From chat, yeah. One winner. Okay. Do, 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 do. Okay. Do, 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 we got do, do. we got Michael. Michael G. Michael G. <laughs> you win. You win. <laughs> Who is Michael unless, G? There's unless he's no longer a, here. A lot of Michael G here. Pick another oh. one. Oh. <laughs> this is what you get when you leave early, bro. All right. You don't get all right. Pick another winner. That's fun. That's fun. All right. <laughs> Let's hear. Brad. Brad. Woo. Is Brad still here? <laughs> Brad is still here. Yeah, Brad. Whoop, whoop. So, Brad, email me with your t shirt size, and I'm going to send you a shirt and not Tracy's cool glasses, but sweet glasses. <laughs> Be jealous. Cool. And then for our Twitter winner, we have tweets from Mark Jones and Alex Fox. And I was thinking, um, I'm just going to write a number down between one and 10. Oh, and y'all tell me your guess. Hang on. <laughs> hang on. Let me, let me. Let me. Okay. Okay. Writing it real big so that hopefully it can be seen. I got to bring a Sharpie into my office. Okay. I'm ready. Who's going to guess first? Nobody. Oh. Alex says one. Mark says six. Three. Wait, so who wins? So it closest oh, without going over or <laughs> just closest? <laughs> I think that means, Christy, that they both win. Yeah, I'm good with that. <laughs> yep. You both win. You both win. <laughs> Send me your t-shirt sizes. <laughs> Send t-shirt sizes. Dang, that was good. That was good. Yeah, that uh, one, yeah. <laughs> I have a certification voucher to also give away. So uh, pull another name out of your cup. Okay. Okay. All right. We got Katie. Woo! Katie. Katie, Katie gets a certification voucher. Woo <laughs> yes. <laughs> um email me figure out what to get certified for <laughs> <laughs> something anything you want <laughs> oh, there's a new certification that i was excited about um it's the like ux designer one it looks really cool it's all about design and what to put where and like accessibility it looks really neat i put it on my list of things. use that one there That's we go pretty cool yay um uh, katie email me let me put my email address in the chat there we go all winners email christy figure out what my email address is i can show your email address found it well i was trying okay. to remember what my community group one was okay here's my email address there email me if you want something i'll send it to you <laughs> <laughs> Mark, All I'll right. probably send you. Everyone email Christy, tell her you want. <laughs> I wrote down the winners. I'll I have, have you a know. recording of this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, remember, we have a TDX, a Trailhead DX watch party coming up on the 23rd. Yep. Um, so join us for that. That'll be fun. We'll just do the keynote portion together and play in the chat and 
make fun of each other and stuff. It's lots of fun. And then uh, we'll do, we'll break out and go to, to breakout sessions as normal. But the connection, yeah, Salesforce with connection was, was really good. I enjoyed that. So if you have the time, we're just watching the keynote together and making jokes. It's more fun with friends. <laughs> <laughs> And um, yeah, be sure and join the, the community group and answer the poll when we post it later today, because uh, your feedback is important to make this group as, as good as it can be and bring in the speakers that we actually need. Woo. Yay. All right. With that, I think we are good, Christy. Awesome. Thanks, everyone, for coming. Thank you. Thank you. See you Go next put these time. Back on. <laughs>